the guy's uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Like, Tole, yeah. I think yeah. we must we must respect him by calling him Emmanuel. Emmanuel, um, Emmanuel Sotole is, is, you know, it it, it 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 honestly just broke my heart because mm. when I read, because I was th I was blaming the photographer first, like this guy is like shooting away and what's going on, and then when he he responded, he was like, no, he had to take the shots because it's his job, but. When he saw that this guy, it was getting serious, he actually tried to get this guy into his car and was screaming for help. And the crowd that was actually watching the brutal butchering of this man just dispersed. Yeah. So this is not, honestly, we cannot, and I'm not, uh, I'm not pro um, King Zuelitini, but we cannot solely blame the very, oh, I can't say idiotic, ne? That guy. Say it. <laughs> I can't. We can't blame that guy. Um, yeah, because he was a he was a tall he was a tall ass. I'm sorry to say. We can't blame blame him, but solely. Yeah. Solely because agree, there agree was 100%. a bubbling. There's been a bubbling. This has been going on since there's 2008, a, and every even before, before there's been, there's been a yeah. bubbling. There has been a bub something brewing, something bubbling, and he was just the spark. And it's and this is what I've said before with the black white debate in this country there's there's such, so much anger and there's so much there's so much tension bubbling under that everything right now we're in a country that just needs a couple of sparks and things are over um i just find i don't know it's a i was thinking i was posting something on facebook y yesterday that actually as south africans we should look beyond just saying oh no changing our whatsapp statuses as no xenophobia we actually have to actively start doing something because now it's just I don't know it's sad to say south africans are lazy because but we are you know we we this country and our government has 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 created this normalization of us being a welfare state so oh i need a house uh the government owes me oh i need a job uh the government owes me but you know these people have come have firstly been displaced and secondly made a way and because the, the the biggest the biggest complaint or the biggest grievance is that in durban and again when I watch Carte Blanche, they were like, no, they take our jobs, they take our businesses, they take our women. Eh, if you go to school, you get a, a better job. Eh, if you focus on your business, you you know, uh, if you treat your women right, maybe they wouldn't run off and, and get a foreigner. So what what's the problem really here? And it's just, I don't know. I think we, we, we are nearing a state of anarchy. And the fact that, oh, oh gosh, oh, prakil. The fact that our president this morning, there was something on Facebook, he had a post, uh, <laughs> like a big check, uh, uh, written 50,000 rands donation from some bank towards the Chatsworth, um, what, what is it called again? Those camps, mm. the Chatsworth camp. The date on the, the date on the, on the, <laughs> on the actual check was wrong. And he was just looking like, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, he's not making the security mm. better. And Velasi, I want you to talk to us about your opinion on the president. Yesterday, he was in Durban. Some people say, too little, too late, bruh. Like, where were you when it broke out? Saying to the people who'd been displaced, as government, we're not trying to tell you to leave. But then he tacked on a, but you guys are saying you want to leave. The, the way I see it, there's been a lot of pressure from other African countries, other African leaders, that South Africa, you need to do something, you need to get your house in order, you can't be acting, this cannot carry on. And they've been quiet for quite a long time now, for years and years and years. Other African countries really haven't said much about, about our xenophobic problem in South Africa. Now this time they really, they've decided, no, enough is enough, you need to get your house in order. And I'm sure there have been all sorts of letters and, and um, dispatches being sent to Pretoria and the Department of Foreign Affairs telling them, if this isn't sorted out, we're going to have to retaliate in some way, whether it's uh, retaliate via diplomatic means in terms of e ejecting uh, uh, diplomats and all that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a big, when that kind of thing kind of happens in international politics, it's a big embarrassment to a country. And I'm sure our Department of Foreign Affairs went to the government, to the leadership, and they're like, we have to do something. You need to start, you need to stand up and say something. But also, look, I get the whole high level uh, um, international, you know, foreign affairs department, but the fact that Almost 63% of foreign nationals aren't registered correctly in this country is a problem. 
you know and i i read somewhere when someone was like ah melusi kikaba has all these fancy suits but there's 63 foreign you no know, 63 percent of foreign nationals aren't properly registered by home affairs that is a problem that is an administrative problem because what happens is that they come seeking asylum you know trying to better their lives and then they have kids and then those kids are registered as south africans and then it's more pressure on our economy and our and you know and our service delivery so why can't we basically fix our administrative side as well because it's this is showing cavities on many levels it's not just a, a social thing and also it shows the underlying issues that our leaders have you can't be a king and say ah guys they must go you know so it means that if it means it could be that you know backhand discussions between the president and the king are like uh, 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 those people they must buy you I know? can totally see that you happening know? I can you know? totally you see know? that because, happening you know, <laughs> if, if you talk if we talk about there was an issue when or you know Nelson Mandela mar married Grasa because a lot of people are like ah people from Mozambique are gonna come and they because now she's our sister-in-law what's happening what's happening those are back at end conversations that these people have with each other and then they have to put on a, 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 a different face in front of the media so I think that South Africa should yes on a high level re reassess the the continental policies and you know the they they multilateral relationships with the certain countries and the fact that Africa is a continent and we're so divided as well we can't be look the way I see South Africa now it's like oh that hot girl ne? in a school who's who's smart and has everything and it thinks that they don't need ev anyone to help them to help them or succeed if you look at our if you look at our professors within our, our universities, they're foreign nationals. Why aren't we having South African professors? Or why aren't we having educated South Africans? It's because we're lazy.